Welcome to this fourth lecture about postdoc tests. We'll go through the Holmes test and briefly discuss the Holmes Sedak method. I recommend that you first watch my video about the Bonferroni method. The whole method, also called Holmes Step Down or Home Bonferroni, is a postdoc test that can be seen as an adjustment of the Bonferroni method. By using Holmes test instead of the Bonferroni correction, will increase the statistical power but keep the family-wise error rate to the same level as when we use the Bonferroni method. However, in contrast to the Bonferroni method, it cannot be used to calculate confidence intervals. We'll now have a look at how the whole method adjusts the p-values. Then we'll apply this test on a simple example. Note that the method can also adjust the significance level. But that is a bit more complicated, so we'll only focus on adjusting the p-values. The method follows three simple steps to adjust the p-values. We first sort all p-values in increasing order, where the first p-value should be the smallest, whereas the last p-value should be the largest p-value. We then multiply the sorted p-values by m plus 1 minus k, where m is the number of p-values we have, in case the rank from 1 to m. For example, this is how the three smallest p-values are adjusted. Since the smallest p-value has the rank 1, it will be multiplied by m. Note that the smallest p-value will be multiplied by the number of tests that we do. The first adjusted p-value will therefore be identical to the Bonferroni correction where all p-values are multiplied by m. Since the second smallest p-value has the rank 2, it will be multiplied by m-1. This adjusted p-value will therefore be lower than if we would use the Bonferroni correction. The third smallest p-value will be multiplied by m-2 and so forth. The subsequent p-values will be multiplied by a reduced factor for each step. The biggest p-value will be multiplied by 1 and will therefore not be adjusted. However, if the calculated adjusted p-value is lower than the previous adjusted p-value, the calculated p-value is set to the previously adjusted p-value so that the adjusted p-values are always increasing. Note that the adjusted p-values greater than 1 should be set to 1 since the p-value should be a value between 0 and 1. Once we have adjusted all p-values, these are then compared to the significance level. If the adjusted p-values are smaller than the significance level, we reject the associated hypotheses. Let's apply Holmes test on the following simple example data where we make three comparisons. In total, we therefore have three p-values that might have been computed by a Fisher's LSD test or from three separate t-tests. Since we make three comparisons, m is equal to 3. We first sort the p-values and multiply the smallest p-value by 3, and the next smallest p-value by 2, and the largest p-value by 1. In this particular example, all comparisons turn out to be significant, since all p-values are less than the general significance level of 0 0.05. In contrast, if we use the Bonferroni method where all p-values are multiplied by 3, only one p-value is now less than 0 0.05. Note that the smallest adjusted p-value for the Holmes test will be identical to the Bonferroni correction. The family-wise error rate will therefore be the same for these two methods if the null hypotheses are true, because the smallest p-value will determine if we will make at least one type 1 error or not. Here is another example where we have six unadjusted p-values. We first sort the p-values, where the smallest p-value gets the rank 1. The second smallest p-value gets the rank 2, and the largest p-value gets the rank m, which is 6 in this example, since we have 6 p-values. We then multiply the sorted p-values by m plus 1 minus the corresponding rank. The smallest p-value is therefore multiplied by 6, and the next smallest p-value will be multiplied by 5, and the next p-value will be multiplied by 4, and so forth. Let's put the final adjusted p-values in this column. Note that the fifth calculation resulted in a value of 0 
which is smaller than the previous value of 0 0.54. The final adjusted p-value is therefore set to the previous value. This explains why many of our adjusted p-values might be identical even though the original p-values are not. After the adjustment, only the first two p-values are less than 0 0.05. The corresponding null hypothesis for these two tests should therefore be rejected. The Holmes method and the Bonferroni method will have the exact same adjusted p-value for the smallest p-value. The probability to commit at least one type 1 error is therefore exactly the same for the two methods if all null hypotheses are true. However, the other adjusted p-values will be smaller for Holmes method compared to Bonferroni. Bonferroni is therefore more likely to not reject a false null hypothesis in comparison to Holmes method. Holmes method has therefore greater power. Holmes method may therefore cause more type 1 errors than the Bonferroni method because the smallest p-value might come from a test based on a false null hypothesis, whereas a lot of other p-values might come from tests based on true null hypotheses. Another postdoc test is the Home CIRAC test, which corrects the p-values with a different equation. The test is said to be slightly more powerful than the Home's test. The method computes 1 minus the original p-values, raised to the power of m plus 1 minus k. We see that the adjusted p-values are generally a bit smaller compared to the Home's method in this example. Similar to Home's method, Home CIRAC will adjust this p-value to 0 0.45 so that the adjusted p-values follow an increasing order. This was the end of this video about the Holmes test. In the next video we have a look at Tukey's test and Dunnett's test. See you in the next lecture and thanks for watching.